All right. Hi, everyone, and welcome to the Trail Tree Homestead channel. Uh, we wanted to start out with sort of a how-to video as far as our meat processing goes here on the homestead. Um, bear in mind that this is our first time recording and posting a video, so just kind of bear with us as we learn this process and grow. Um, so here at the homestead, we try to grow raise and process all of our own food. Um, today we are actually processing a steer um, that we were given by a family friend. So just a little couple tips here uh, as you watch the process with us. Um, we let this beef hang for a little over four weeks in the cooler. So it was nice and seasoned, nice and tender. Um, right now we're just doing the burger. Um, over the years we've kind of found that uh, placing our grinder components uh, in the freezer for about, I don't know, a half hour before we grind really seems to help. Keeps the auger and the grinding components, uh, the plates from heating up as fast, you know, if you're processing a large quantity of meat. Um, it's always important to try to keep things as cold as you can, keep your environment as clean as you can uh, while processing, you know, obviously to prevent uh, any bacteria or anything from taking hold. So uh, along with the grinding components, we also like to put the meat in the freezer for about 30 minutes. Um, helps to firm it up. Uh, it goes through the grinder much better uh, than warm meat. Um, obviously we don't want to keep the meat in there till it's frozen. You don't want it to be frozen, but just till it gets firm, kind of cold, um, gets a little bit of a tacky feeling. That's how you know when it's kind of ready to get out and to go through the grinder. So as you can start to see here, we are starting off with a very coarse grind for our first pass uh, through the grinder here. Um, you can sometimes go straight to a fine grind, um, but it is a little harder on your grinder. At least that's kind of what we have found. Um, and you don't always get, I don't know, you don't always get the best grind. Uh, that you could uh, passing it through the course and then the fine seems to work out really well as you'll see here So as you can see here, we're just still continuing putting meat through the grinder. It's kind of a, oh, I don't know, kind of a monotonous process, but, um, you know, just takes time. Got to be patient. Got to put, you know, don't feed the grinder, you know, more than it can take at one time. You don't want to bog it down. Um, you know, the meat just tends to, I don't know, go at a good pace. Um, also, we are using an LEM grinder. Um, I believe it's a third horsepower and um, seems to work phenomenal. We've used it for several years now. Um, we've used it on 
I don't know, numerous deer, you know, more than I can count now. And uh, it's done a phenomenal job. Never had any problems with it. Never, um, no complaints whatsoever. So if you want, you know, feel free to check them out too. So we're just going to kind of speed things up here since this is going to be, I don't think you want to watch the exact same process for about, I don't know, 10 minutes. So we're just grinding. We just continue to grind using the fine plate, the coarse plate, actually. As you can see here, uh, when we get to the end of the um, end of the burger, end of the big chunks, I always like to take um, a little bit of the stuff, the meat that we've already ground, and pass it back through, um, you know, the auger because then it helps. Uh, I found that it helps to get any, I don't know, chunks that might have gotten stuck in there. Helps everything to pass through. That way you've you know, you don't end up with any big chunks of meat that maybe haven't made it through your first grind or your first plate. So just a little tip there might you might find helpful. And now I'm uh, switching the plate over. I'm taking out the coarse plate and I'm going to be switching over to the fine grind. All right, as you can see, we got everything set up, um, switched our meat lugs out there, and we are getting ready to pass the coarse ground meat through the grinder again, through the fine grinding plate. So this is a little bit, um, it, it goes a little different. The meat doesn't, uh, you kind of have to help it a little bit more. You know, there's the uh, the little plunger or whatever you want to call it, the home wrecking stick As you can see, uh, that we used to pass the meat out through um, the grinder there. looks far um, different than, you know, just kind of helps and, push things you know, through. But again, like doing, you don't want to overdo it. You don't want to push the two uh, grinds where you want to bog your grinder you down. really get or, a good finished um, product. You know, I mean, it'll just cause it to you know, overheat nearly. You know, uh, we're not a fan of a failure, failure, but it looks like you know, what you would get stop working in the store in the if you were to buy you know, ground beef. So again, we're just going to speed the process up here because we just continue to, uh, you know, pass this through on the fine grind.
All right, so again, as you can see, uh, we put some of the finely ground burger back up top um, so that we could pass that back through the grinder. That way, you know, we got uh, help, made sure that all of the meat went through the fine grinding plate and we didn't have any, you know, coarse chunks that were still left in there that, you know, didn't get passed through. So here I'm just taking the grinding plate and the auger out, um, getting any meat that was left over in there, you know, making sure nothing was stuck in the back. Um, I used a knife there to take the grinding plate off. It gets a little, sometimes it gets a little stuck in there. Obviously that's probably not the best choice, so I don't know. Find something probably not as sharp. I could have done that, but we we're a little bit on a time crunch here. Um, so now we will uh, switch over and what we're going to do is I'm going to start uh, weighing out packages here. I'm going to start putting the burger um, in some uh, gallon size Ziploc freezer bags um, and weighing out two pound packages. Um, we have found that, I don't know, two pounds is just I ideal for us and our family here on the homestead. So. Uh, you could obviously do these any size that you want. One pound, two pound, I mean, probably up to five pounds you could fit in one of those gallon freezer bags. Um, so again, just according to whatever your family size is.
So again, here I am, I'm weighing out the uh, two pound packages and then I'm passing them on. Um, and what we do from there is we kind of um, try to flatten the meat out if we can in the bag. And then we kind of fold it over on itself to try and press out all the air that we can because we want to try and minimize air. Um, air obviously um, allows for bacterial growth, so we want to, you know, get as much out of that, as much air as we can out of the bag uh, as possible. All right, so now we are moving on to packaging. We are wrapping. Um, some people might say this is a little bit of overkill to put it in freezer bags and you know then put it in freezer paper. Um, it may be, but this is what we have found works best for us. Um, we have found that we can um, keep meat uh, in the freezer for a good year um, without having any um, freezer burn or any off flavors or taste so we like to do it this way um, you know uh, we'd rather overkill than you know not do enough and have I don't know 20 30 pounds of burger that you know was freezer burnt or you know just tasted terrible so nobody wants that um, and as you can see we got a pretty good process going here um, again, it's just taking some time, a little trial and error. So I think all said and done throughout this process, um, we ended up with, I don't know, I think we had 80 pounds or more of hamburger. Um, it took us just a couple hours. Um, Took us a while to get the process down. It hasn't always. Sometimes it's taken us much longer to do this. Um, but this is our process. I hope you found this video useful. Um, feel free to leave any questions, comments. Uh, you know, don't forget to like and subscribe. And you know, we'll be posting more videos. And I hope you guys enjoyed. And God bless.